okay so hello everyone so today we will be discussing about test driven development so i'm sharing my screen uh, please confirm if it is visible yes yes okay so we will discuss about test driven development so these are the points that we are going to discuss so first one is what is test driven development so steps uh, included in test driven development types of tests in test driven development and pros and cons of doing test driven development and there are some key points which we need to remember while doing test driven development okay so first question is what is test driven development uh, so in normal development so what we do like if we have any requirement first we implement that and then we test that by manually or automation so also we write some test cases in python to test our uh, implementation so it may be class methods functions so that is the normal approach but in test driven development first we write test cases before writing actual code so that is the main concept of test driven development so in normal development we first write code then we write test cases but in test driven development we first write test cases and then we write actual code okay so there are some steps in test driven development that we will discuss if anybody have any question please feel free to ask so these are the main five steps of test driven development okay the first one is write test cases okay so for example if we have any new requirement or feature to add so first we will write test cases or later to that requirement okay so it helps us to understand uh, better about the requirements for example if you have requirement then you will analyze so what would be the possible features according to that features you will write your test cases okay so second step is running the test cases so this step includes running test cases uh, which we written in uh, step first and but make sure uh, while running test cases all all the test cases should have filled okay so if you are running test cases because we didn't write any actual code so it is obvious test cases should be filled so third step is writing actual code so now we have done with step first and step second so now we need to write the actual code in order to pass those failed test cases Okay, so remember one thing we have to write only that much amount of code so that is enough to pass those failing test cases so fourth step is uh, make all test cases pass yeah so after writing test cases uh, sorry after writing actual code so rerun all the test cases again and make sure they all are passing so the last step is refactor and improve so once all the test cases are passing so go through the code that you have written and uh, try to refactor it and if, if there is there any area you can imp make an improvement or refactor that you can do uh, this all the five steps also called as red green refactor strategy so where red is include writing test cases and running test cases with the uh, failure 
so green includes uh, writing code and uh, making all the test cases pass refactor is the last step so in which we can refactor and Im improve the code that we written any question no okay i will show you a simple example uh for example uh, so this is a employee class uh, you can also ca call it a like we have to implement a feature uh, related to an employee okay so i have taken example of one class which includes data class so in this class so i written a method compute payout uh for which uh, which that method i didn't implement it okay so this employee class includes name id base salary allowance hra tds ppf and on the behalf of these parameters we will compute the salary of an employee so that is the one of the feature of employee to calculate the payout so this file is containing test cases related to this employee class so there are two test cases so first one is to check whether the compute payment payout method is returning float type or not and the second one is if i am providing these values name id base salary and allowance so what would be the possible payout okay so so as we discussed so our first step is to write the test cases so we have done with that step so second step is running test cases and make sure uh, they all are failing so if i will run this so two of the test cases are failing so second statement is true so now third statement is like uh, writing actual code so i take an other example so but we have to write an only in one class so for example uh, previously uh, compute payout method was not implemented uh, but in new example i implemented that method okay so this method will compute the salary of an employee so which includes base salary hra and allowances okay so so we have done, also done with third step and fourth step is make sure all the test cases are passing so after writing actual code so i will again run the test cases and all the two test cases are passing so <laughs> so we have done with all the four steps so last step is refactor and improve so we can again look into the code so if we think so there is a chance to improve any of the statement and any of the code so then we can also perform that so so these all are the steps so which should take place during test driven development any question okay okay so now types of tests in test driven development uh, maybe you guys were already familiar with so unit testing integration testing regression testing so unit testing when we test a unit of code for example if there is a class so its unit uh, may be its method so from the whole class if we are 
testing only one of the method then it will fall under unit testing same same in the case for any function if we return any function and we are testing that function it will also fall under unit testing category so second is integration testing so for example if we are writing multiple units of codes for example in a class if we are writing multiple methods or we are writing multiple functions and at the end we are using all those function so in order to perform one feature and in order to fulfill one requirement so integration testing uh, we run to make sure so all the components that uh, integrated with each other are working fine so for example there are if there are two functions so one function is calling other function newly implemented function so if they all are working fine so so that is the way we can determine using integration testing so last one is regression testing so regression testing is almost same uh, like integration testing we run regression testing for example if uh, we have already implemented features so which are working fine and all the test cases are passing related to the, those features and now we came come across with the new requirement and we implemented that feature and uh, regression testing is reg reg regression testing is uh, done in order to check whether any newly implemented feature is affecting the old one or not so if you implemented any new feature but uh, that is breaking old feature so so in the regression test testing we make sure those things and fix it so <clears throat> next is the, uh, there are some pros and cons of test driven development that we will dis discuss so the first one is requirement understanding so the most of most important benefit of test driven development is so it forces us to think about requirements so for example if we have any requirement so so while doing test driven development we most focus on the what is the requirement and uh, what are their corresponding features so during in order to do test driven development so it is necessary we should know what exactly we need to do so that is the most important uh, benefit of test driven development so the second one is maintainability and debugging so so initially test driven development is a time consuming process uh, but uh, eventually so it is very helpful to debug and maintain the code because we write only that much amount of code that we actually need in order to pass those test cases so for uh, for example if we are adding new requirement and that is affecting an older requirement that we can easily debug uh, with the help of this written test cases and fix it accordingly so you can assume like uh, you have written no test cases right and uh, you developed a feature and test it and that is working fine but uh, if there will be any new feature and you make changes in the existing code and you you will test only the new feature so that is working fine but it might be the case like uh, while developing a new feature uh, you affect the old feature so these are the things that we can track uh, during test driven development so the third is only write code that is needed so as we know so we have to write only as much as of 
amount of code that is needed to uh, pass the written test cases. So if uh, if we have written any code statement, so that is not affecting during test, uh, which is that is not affecting any test cases. So we can remove that line easily. So the last is easy to refactor. So, so for example, if uh, we have multiple features to implement, so corresponding to each feature, uh, we can implement methods and functions. So, so that are also easy to debug and easy to refactor. Okay. So now there are some cause of test driven development so first one is slow process so test driven development is a bit time consuming process as compared to normal approach so it should be considered while estimating time okay so also so if we have a new requirement of we if we have a new project and we are deciding to do the test driven development so the management should aware of that so second one is maintain test cases when the requirements change so for example if you have done with the requirement but uh, in the future so if a requirement changes you have to change your test cases and code accordingly so for example if you change the code according to new requirement but you didn't change the test cases so it will cause issue okay so there are some key points uh, which we need to take care during test driven development so first one is decoupling so means whenever you are writing test cases so each test case should be independent of other test cases okay so for example so in my example so these two test cases are independent of each other okay so the next the other statement is do not run multiple tests with same the data so so as you can see so both of the test cases are using the same data so but that should not be happen so if we are running multiple test cases we should run all the test cases with the different type of data so we can check uh, like uh, if they are passing to each type of data second so do not need to test built-in functions so if we are using any built-in python libraries so we do not need to write test cases for those functions and modules third point is run negative testing so for example here uh, as as i know so see employee id is expecting integer base salary is expecting float and allowance is also expecting float okay so that we call is a positive testing so for example uh, if there is any function so which are uh, to which we are pa passing uh, arguments as a integer values so that is the expected behavior but make sure also write test cases uh, with the negative values for example if allowance expecting float value so try to pass a string value or any other value and make sure the your written code is also handling exceptions very well so that we call a negative value like a test the code on the behalf of unexpected inputs fourth one is mock external or third party services uh, so in testing there is a concept of mocking 
so mocking for example if your code is dependent upon any third party library or any third party services and uh, and you don't want to run that third party services because you are just doing testing for example if you are using any a third party api uh, which is a paid api so you don't want to make a uh, requests while test cases because it will cost you so in that case uh, you can mock that uh, api so mocking is a different concept uh, you can also read about that so using mocking uh, we actually <coughs> do not run that service actually so we just uh, create a mock object like fake object on in, in our memory and use it accordingly Any question? No problem. Okay. Okay. I think these all are the step, all the important steps uh, in test driven development. So I will share this slide with all of you. Then you can take a look. If you guys have any questions, you can let me know, or else we can drop. Priyankos, I just have a question. Uh, like, if we have some, uh, say, some codes and has been written to test uh, the database queries or some API result. So in those cases, we we have nested like JSON formats, right? So in those cases, like, how do we write uh, test cases? So for example, you are talking about like if you are implementing APIs, right? Uh-huh. So uh we can also write test cases for APIs. So if you are working if you are using different frameworks like Django, Flask, or Fast Fast API, so they have inbuilt a me mechanism for testing. So testing is uh nothing like for example in unit testing, uh what we what we test, like if we are giving some inputs and we are expecting that service to give us a expected output so if it is not giving expected output then in that case uh, we say like test is fa failed so in api uh, actually most of the time we do not use the real database so we use the mock database so so test driven development is applicable to all all type of testing so whether it is api or whether we are using any class function so it is applicable got it thank you so in frameworks uh, i think all the frameworks have inbuilt testing mechanism we can also use that or we can also use uh, if we don't want to use that then we can use for example in in order to test api so we have to make a request to that api and uh, and we have to expect the desired output if the desired output is not as expected so so that we consider that is failing and there is some issue Okay, I think we are good. Any other question? No, Priyankash. Okay, uh, we can drop. Uh, I will share this slide to all of you. Thank you, Priyankash. Yeah, thank, so thank, thank you. Thank you, Priyankash. Thank you, Priyankash.